Okay, in this video, we are going to do number six from the 2022 Calc BC exam, and it is the series question. So the function f is defined by the power series f of x equals x minus x cubed over three plus x to the fifth over five minus x to the seventh over seven plus dot 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 plus negative one to the n x to the two n plus one over two n plus one plus dot 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 for all real numbers x for which the series converges. Now the first question is to use the ratio test to find the interval of convergence of the power series. So we're gonna to try to figure out all x for which this series converges. They're telling us to use the ratio test, so that's going to be the limit as n approaches infinity of the n plus first term. So we take the nth term and we replace every n that we see with n plus one. So that's gonna give us negative one to the n plus one. Now x to the, we have two Quantity n plus 1 plus 1, that's 2n plus 2 plus 1 is 2n plus 3, over 2n plus 3, times the reciprocal of the nth term. So times 2n plus 1 over negative 1 to the n, x to the 2n plus 1. All right, now, almost everything here just cancels out, right? If we go to infinity, um, we are just going to be left with the absolute value of x squared, which is really just x squared because x squared is always positive. But why did this happen? Well, the absolute values took care of the negative one to the n parts. And then 2n plus one over 2n plus three as n goes to infinity is just one. So that part also cancels itself out. And we're just left with x to the 2n plus three over x to the 2n plus one. They differ by x to the second. So that's where that came from. Now we know the ratio test, we definitely converge if the ratio that we get, which is often called rho, is less than one. So we know that this series converges absolutely between negative one and one. Now what we need to do is test the endpoints. So to test the endpoints, we go back and we substitute them, right? So we just say at x equals negative one, our series is gonna become the sum from n equals zero to infinity. I don't even know if you need to put the n equals zero there. You could probably just go the sum to infinity. But if you look at it, it definitely is starting at zero um, because if you plug in zero, you get x to the first. Um, so it starts at zero to infinity. If I plug in negative one, I gotta kind of work this out, right? So my, I'm gonna have a negative one to the n, then I'm gonna have a negative one to the two n plus one. That's negative one to the three n plus one. And now if you think about it, when n is zero, that's negative one. When n is one, that's four. When, uh, sorry, it, the exponent is four. Basically look at the exponent, right? The exponent goes one, four, uh, seven. It's alternating between evens and odds, which means this is still alternating. That's the key thing. So I'm gonna say that my series becomes negative one to the three n plus one over two n plus one. This converges by the alternating series test for sure. Now, I don't know if we necessarily need to write out the reason for that. I mean, it alternates uh, the terms decrease in magnitude towards zero. That would be uh, what I would write if I thought I needed to write that, but I don't think I need it. I think I can just say that this converges by alternating series test. Now we need to test at x equals one. So at x equals one, you just get negative one to the n over two n plus one. That one is definitively gonna converge by the alternating series test. And so we have both endpoints converging. So when the question is, what is the interval of convergence? The interval of convergence will be negative one inclusive to one inclusive. I like to write it as an inequality, but you could write it using interval notation if you wanted to. All right, next up. Show that the absolute value of f of one half minus one half is less than one tenth. So the absolute value of f of one half minus one half is saying the error. So we're just trying to show that the error is less than one tenth, but like the error doing what, right? Well, clearly we're plugging one half into f. So x is gonna be equal to one half. So now we just have to figure out how many terms of the series did they use to get one half as the approximation. That's what we're trying to do. So I wanna establish that this is a convergent series I don't know that I really need to do this, so I'm not gonna make you watch me write it, but I'm gonna say, at x equals one half, the series for f of x is an alternating series with terms that decrease in magnitude to zero 
Therefore, it is a convergent alternating series. I'm just doing that to justify using the alternating series error because um, I don't want to use Lagrange on this. All right, so now what is happening? Well, if we approximate f of 1 half with 1 half, right? So we're using 1 half as our approximation of the sum of the series. That uses only the first term of the series, right? We're plugging 1 half in for x, which means we're plugging 1 half in there, and we're saying we're done. That's our approximation. Well, if that's our approximation, the next term or the magnitude of the next term should be the maximum error. So now I just need to take one half and plug it in here and show that the value I get is less than one tenth. So how do I write that? Well, I'm going to say, therefore, the error, which is the absolute value of f of one half minus one half, um, is going to be less than the magnitude of that term. So I take one half and plug it in. And that gives me 1 over 24, which is definitely less than 1 over 10. I don't know why they chose 1 over 10. Like, uh, whatever. Good, good, right? Usually they choose something closer, like 1 over 20. But 1 over 10, definitely less than that. Um, and then I didn't really explain why I was doing that. So I decided I should probably also say using the magnitude of the first term left off as our error bound. So that's going to answer the question. It justifies it. All right, let's take a look at the next part. The next part's great, by the way. Write the first four non-zero terms and the general term for an infinite series that represents f prime of x. It's a power series. It's like designed for the power rule. We're just going to use a power rule to find this. So f prime of x is going to equal. So we look at the first term. It's x. We take its derivative. We get 1. We look at the next term. It's negative x cubed over 3. We take the derivative. We get minus x squared. We go to the next term, x to the fifth over five, the derivative is plus x to the fourth. We go to the next term, the derivative of this is minus x to the sixth. Now we have to go to the nth term and take the derivative. You bring the exponent down, so you bring 2n plus 1 down, it cancels with the 2n plus 1 in the denominator, and we're going to get plus dot 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 plus negative 1 to the n stays, x to the 2n because you have subtracted 1 from the exponent. That's the entire part. But we do need this for the next part, so I'm going to copy it over. Uh, I don't know why. There we go. Okay, so use the result from part C to find the value of f prime of 1 sixth. This is f prime of x, right? That's our, our thing that we got in part C. I brought it over. I noticed immediately this is geometric. Since this is geometric, we know how to find the sum. Um, so the sum of a geometric series an infinite geometric series, is the first term, which in this case is 1, divided by 1 minus the common ratio. The common ratio here, we have negative 1 to the n, we have x to the 2n. The common ratio is negative 1 times x squared. So that's just negative x squared. You can also get that by doing negative x squared divided by 1, or x to the fourth divided by negative x squared. Divide um, consecutive terms, and you will get the ratio. So it's minus the quantity negative x squared, which means that f prime is 1 over 1 plus x squared. And then the question is, find the value of f prime of 1 half. I'm just going to take 1 half and plug it in. So f prime of 1 half, I'm sorry, f prime of 1 sixth. I don't know why I read that wrong. I think I read it wrong every time. f prime of 1 sixth is going to be 1 over 1 plus 1 sixth squared. You can stop there. Um, but I decided to keep going. It's, it's not that bad. We just end up with 36 over 37, and that's it for this question, and I hope this was helpful, and good luck.